so today is Monday, August 29th, 2011. And this is the orthographic and the axonometric of a wooden ladder. So what we'll do is you'll each get a ladder, and I think the assignments now call for two different ladders for the orthographic and the axonometric. Maybe we'll just stick to one ladder, um, and you are to draw it in uh, orthographic, like it did the milk carton, and in axonometric. Uh, so I have some old notes, which I'll leave when I learn, but I'll also match the new notes with the video, okay? So the first drawing essentially is just like the, the milk carton. You're going to put your views um, of your letter. Uh, in some cases, you might not know which letter is going, like if it's a P or a Q, but in most cases, you'll know. So don't worry about it. Just you know, just decide what's your front. And then, um, once again, let's say that the right side, oh, let me darken that. Okay, so the right side view, okay, is the view that if you went around the object, that if that's the front and you came around it on the right side, that's what you would see, okay? So in this case, uh, this M, uh, the letter is raised on top of the block. It's hard to see now, but essentially you have a, a block and then you have the type that's actually a little bit higher. Um, so when you're looking at the object like this and you turn it, that extra step, there's a name for it, I can remember now, is going to be shown on this side, okay? So, I'm just making it schematic now, but... Okay, so that would be the right view. And so the, the uh, left view would be, again, the opposite, which might have different features here, depending on what your letter looks like, you know, Maybe there is something else. And then the back is pretty simple. That's just the, the, the back part. Um, so you can see all the parts that are actually the letter form are kind of, in the drawing, are kind of facing towards the center. All right. Um, so this, again, can be a freehand drawing with some kind of touches of a straight edge. Um, don't worry too much about uh, the fact that the type, I don't know if you can see it here, um, is actually tapered sometimes to make the type a little stronger. So what will happen is, you know, this might be the letter. And then in plan view, what you would see is like a little you know, taper the edge going down so that it's actually like that instead of like that, straight down, I'd rather taper it instead of straight down. So for your drawing, kind of assume, unless you really want to show it, just, just pretend it's kind of straight down so it makes it a little bit simpler. All right. So this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, in terms of the isometric, uh, the axonometric view is a little more elaborate. Now, before I talk about that, I'm just going to say a few things about uh, just letter form corrections. And again, the, the, the letter you might pick may or may not have this, depending on what typeface it is. But I'll just quickly go through them. Uh, so essentially, you might know this already, but essentially every letter form, unless it's like totally geometric and totally non-corrected, um, will have corrections, which usually means shaving off parts, making them thinner, thicker, etc. So, you know, for example, in an E, uh, these distances, even though we perceive this as being the center, is not the center at all. So what happens is the center line gets pushed up so that these parts are actually different. That's a little narrow, that's a little shorter. Uh, and then the same thing happens to the strokes themselves themselves, so the uh, horizontal strokes are a little bit thinner than the vertical strokes, 
Okay, and I'm exaggerating it here, but if you look at the Vedica and a lot of other fonts, it's, they're like this. Uh, the middle stroke is even thinner than the top and the bottom stroke because it's in the middle. Uh, and then another correction is that the top stroke and the, and the middle stroke get shaved off again, a little bit at the top and even more so in the middle. Okay, so when you, uh, when you look at your letters, even though it's a serif, later you will notice that that's what happens. Okay, uh, And it becomes really evident when you actually flip the letter upside down. Uh, well, with the E you would know it's upside down because it actually changes. But with an S it would be not as obvious. So if I make that upside down, you'll see that's really lopsided, right? Yeah, so there's my S, and again, you have these things that come in. The serifs are smaller, the endings are smaller at the top. Um, simply because, yeah, somehow the top part needs to be a little bit smaller to make it look right. If I flip it, again, it's like really, really weird. And again, this is exaggerated, but... Um, so, in general, for the axonometric, again, let's go with the 30, 30 uh, degree angle, uh, more or less, just because that makes things simpler. You don't have to figure out... Uh, I need nails. There. Okay, so once again, that's more or less based on this, tri on this triangle's angle. Okay, so if I flip that, I get that same angle. And, um, and I forget now, I think it, the assignment calls for two views. So one view could be your letter um, this way. Let's see. Right? Kind of normal. And then maybe the other view is like standing up. So the other view could be like that. One thing I'm asking you that you don't do, and I think I said this about the um, carton as well, is don't do the view that would be like an orthographic view, say the A like this, and then simply uh, turn it because that just makes it, I mean it's okay, but uh, makes it for a, a little boring. So you essentially you redrawn the letter as is, and then all you do is like you turn it this way or that way, and then you just extrude it. Okay, it's used a lot in uh, architecture, but uh, some views. But let's not do that for here. Okay. Uh, what I want you to do it is in fact to squish this so that the view is more like this way so that you need to figure out, okay, how is that A now like that, right? I have to, I have to kind of start playing with my ellipses and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh, for this assignment, and I said it before, it's really, really going to be useful to use um, tracing paper. I'll show that in a second why. Um, okay, that's a straight letter, although it has some curves in the uh, serifs. Um, you know, these kind of curves. So even those, you're going to have to, you know, figure them out and block them out. And maybe you can appro approximate them to be parts of circles, even though I'm pretty sure they're not. But for this assignment, you can pretend they are. Um, so we go back to, like, how do you show a circle in perspective? And that, of course, is an ellipse, right? So, one place where we can get into trouble is figuring out uh, the top part of a letter, let's say an O, like what I'm showing here. Um, it's easy, it's right there, right? So how does it go on the bottom? And that's where I say, okay, use tracing paper, because if you do figure out the top, 
or let me put it this way, you could do it like, like this. Let's just say that's a letter without the part that's being raised to actually print. Um, what I can do now is I can actually lift this up and I do the other one. And then I connect. Okay, those two. And here I'm showing the way to do it is to actually draw both and then kind of forget about the one that's underneath. Uh, the point where it connects again is at the tangent point. So this part is going to be your height of that little piece that sticks out. If you can see it, it's that little part. Okay. Um, you guys should, you know, if you need to, something is not clear, just interrupt me at any time, okay? Uh, this sketch just shows the different uh, line weights, and I think you have that tutorial as a video and also as a PDF. And you know, you have a number one line, which is the outline. And you can use this technique if you want, you don't have to. Um, then you have a number two line, which are lines that are inside the drawing and they're hiding some surfaces but they're showing some surfaces, or rather they're at the border between some surfaces that are shown and some that are not. And then you have a number three line, which is a border between two surfaces or more, or more and they're all shown. It's probably just between two surfaces, okay? Um, you don't have to do shading for this drawing. If you do, um, and I'll get into that, just do simple strokes, okay? Don't fill in like that not as good. Uh, just do, you know, straight strokes. Don't do this either. Okay. So this drawing shows how would I, you know, transfer, you know, this is almost like uh, drawing by coordinates. So where I divide the, the shape into little squares and then I take every little bit and I move it onto my oblique version. Um, so I know a simple O like this is actually not that simple, right? Because the curves are not, are not really part of circles, they're more elaborate. Uh, but what I was trying to show is that once you, if you use that technique, you can then slowly plot, you know, where things are. So in this case, that particular segment, you know, would be here. And you can use that as, a, as, a, as an aid. You don't have to absolutely do it this way. Another way to do it is just like drawing anything, just, just take your shape and break it down into its parts, right? So an S, of course, is, is too, this pencil is too hard. Okay. Uh, or rather a Z, it's a simple shape, right? But then we know that, you know, it's not thin like that. So if you happen to get a Z, it's likely to have a stroke, not the stroke, it's probably not gonna go like that because then you would go off here and off there. So it's probably gonna go like this. And then maybe it's gonna have the other two strokes here and maybe this one is gonna be slightly shorter there. Um, so once you figure out what the main structure is, then you can start transposing it onto your um, isometric. Okay, and that's the way I would do it. I would first draw the letter onto your block and then extrude it up. Okay, so this would be, let's say my letter is like this, that's my diagonal. So first I establish these lines, that's a little thin. Okay, so let's say that's right now. I don't know since I'm not really working from a, a real letter. Um, 
what I could do is actually draw my letter and then I simply move it up and this is really great I mean it, it, you'd be hard pressed to find something that's more direct and immediate and kind of intuitive as drawing the shape and then simply moving your tracing paper up and there you have it I mean you know there's not much to it um, because then you have the one below. What it does is it gives you the right um, thicknesses in the different views. Uh, here now there isn't much of a difference, but you can see that um, this looks a little thinner because it is a little bit more of an angle, right? Okay. I'm drawing all of these really, really thick because I want you to show on the screen, but when you do your drawing you probably want to start much lighter. Um, and also after you've done that, if they're lighter, then you can make it, you know, more interesting by doing the, you know, the little fuzzy lines and the little crossing lines and, you know, make the drawing a little more interesting. I'm drawing the lines now that really one would probably draw before. So I'm drawing it after the fact to make it look like it was a lot of construction, which is okay. Okay, so that's already more interesting, right? Because it looks like there was actually a process. And I'll go around and help you guys out with these drawings because these letters are kind of difficult. They're not actually that simple. Um, all right, so I'm going, I've gone through the old notes. Let me just do a quick... Um, version on, on this one. And again, you don't have to measure everything, but... Um, but you can always use your pencil, right? You can use your finger, and you can just take measurement this way. So let me see, first of all, if this is a square. And my guess is going to be, but because it's an M, remember the M spaces? You know, I don't know if you've taken type 1 yet, to, to graphic design 1, but an M space is usually a square. No, it's not, because this is wood. Uh, it's close to a square, so it's a little... Uh, when you do your isometric, maybe you want to redo a little drawing of your front just to have as a reference. Okay. Um, so, you know, these are the spaces for the serifs, then you have your strokes. The strokes are different. That's thick, thin. Um, so you have a thick stroke, a thin stroke, a thick stroke, and a thin stroke. And again, um, so let's start. I, I would start by simply dividing my my square into like bands and see how I see how I do. So maybe it's like this, like that. And the center is probably here. It's a little off center, so take that. And then you can adjust it, but that's too thick. Already I can see. Go for it right now. Uh, always do like this kind of, you know, reference points. Yeah, I'm a little fat there. It's okay. I didn't do a great job, but. Maybe I think I make it, made it too big. But anyway, once you have that drawing, uh, then you can start, you know, planning it. Like that. And, 
yeah, so you would you would start maybe plotting plotting um, you know these points, which are a little bit off centered. Again, you can turn your paper so that you can you know, go like this and make it easier on you. And after I finish this, we can start. It's probably time for a break. Um, oh, okay. Let me talk about for a second about our curves again. here is not as good as here but um, okay let's quickly finish that by by moving it up So I'm just going to move this up, and what's great now is that I, you know, instantly I'm going to see where the lines that give me the height are, are going to need to stop, just simply because you, you just know, right? I mean, because it's here, it's there, and then here I just raise it. It's very, very direct. I mean, there is no, now I know the die goes this way and it's going to stop there. Because usually that's where the trouble begins, like, oh, where exactly does it go? Um, so here, for example, I can see that actually there is no, I don't see any detail because it's all hidden. Individually, but um, I just want to. So, if I were to do that curve, how would I do it? Um, so, if we said that we're approximating them to be circles or frag, you know, a quarter of a circle, that's how I would approach it. Um, okay, so if that's where my curve. Oops, guys, you have to tell me if you don't see what I'm showing. Hello? Um, you'll be able to see it in the video because I'm not zooming there. But So if that's the... Essentially, I'm drawing a little area there that encloses my circle. Right? So what I, what I need to do is just... I'm, I'm just blowing it up here. This and at this point I can inscribe my beautiful ellipse in there. And of that beautiful ellipse, I'm just gonna keep a quarter right here. Okay. Now at this other end is the same deal, except you're gonna be using the other part of the ellipse, the sh the shallower one, let's just say. So if I were to do that, let's see how we do that. So from there to there. Okay. And now this is the only part I'm going to use right there. So this and this are part of the same circle, right? They're just different, different views, different um, foreshortening. 
It's a really fat Egyptian serif, or slap serif, as they're called. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to stop there for the letters, okay?